Today, I wanted to talk about a few common mistakes I see beginner software engineers making all the time. These are things I've seen repeatedly pop up while mentoring and managing junior engineers. I think these are things that come out as a side effect of how most educational institutions approach teaching computer science, which works very well to teach the basics, but how things are done in the real world are quite different from how you do things in school. And I feel like a lot of fresh graduates struggle making that transition. Hopefully this video will give you some idea on what to look out for as a beginner software engineer. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay till the end to find out how Skillshare can help you develop curiosity and a growth mindset. Hi guys, my name is Utsav and I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. And this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, all the reference materials from this video will be in the description below and I have timestamps. So feel free to jump to sections that interest you more. <laughs> all right, let's get started. So the first mistake I see beginner software engineers make is trying to build the next big thing. So you've just graduated college and armed with your newly learned programming skills, you want to build the next big thing. However, in most cases, that drive comes from passion rather than experience, which is not a bad thing. Passion makes great things happen, but more often than not, you will need experience to pull it off. I know there have been amazing engineers like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg who dropped out of school and went on to build some of the greatest companies in the world. But beyond all the success, what we fail to see is that they probably started coding very early on and by the time they were in college, they had likely mastered a lot of things that most college students are just starting to learn. So while these are great people to hold as inspirations, trying to follow their exact model can be detrimental for most beginners. In school, we build simple projects and call them things like inventory management system or library catalog systems or things like that. But at best, we are really just building a three-tier system. Uh, real world projects are much more complicated than that. Uh, and especially when you need to build a scalable, distributed, fault-tolerant system. So a better approach as a beginner is to build small components and gradually build up that experience to be able to create something end-to-end. Instead of trying to build Facebook, try to build something simple like Tic-Tac-Toe, which is small enough that you can implement properly in a short period of time. It can be a simple console app, but it will let you get comfortable with the data structures and even some game algorithms like Minmax. Uh, once you've done that, maybe try chess. Uh, chess is much more complicated than that, but it builds on the same concept of board players, etc. You can start by building a simple two-player game where you just simply manage the game state. But if you get that done, maybe add some supervised learning where a player can play against AI. And then you can add some user management where users can save their game state online and resume later on any device. Then build on to make it an online multiplayer platform where users can get matched based on their skills. You get the idea. As a beginner, it's much easier to start with a basic idea and build on top of it instead of trying to build the whole project at once. As you repeat this process over and over again with different projects, not only do you get better at your fundamentals, but you also get better at thinking through your projects and how different components can combine to make uh, the end product that you're looking for, which would make you a better designer where you will think through your problems before jumping into code right away. Which takes me to number two, which is jumping to code right away. As a beginner engineer, you have so much excitement to code and it's common to view your responsibility and to some extent even quantify your skills with the amount of code you write. Let me tell you right off the bat that this concept is very flawed. If you are the kind that jumps to code with the first idea or solution that comes to your mind, you will end up wasting a lot of your time. Resist that temptation to code and think about alternate ways to challenge your own assumptions first. Yes, some of this comes from experience, but it's always good to build the habit early on. Too many times I see beginner software engineers jump to code, work on something for days on end and come back to realize that they didn't even understand the problem in the first place. So don't be that, avoid that issue. Third, trying to build everything from scratch. This kind of builds on the previous point where new software engineers are so eager to code that they want to write everything from scratch. Building something on your own is a great way to learn the area that you're interested in. However, in practical terms, you should look to get the most out of your time. And one great way to do that is writing less repeated code and reusing as much as possible. And libraries are a great way to achieve this. Anytime you come across a problem, try to find an existing mature library that someone else has already written. Are you parsing a commonly used data structure like trees, um, there's probably a library for that. Are you serializing, deserializing objects a lot? 
there's a library for that. Are you mapping properties between various similar objects? There's a library for that. And there are libraries for literally every common thing that you do, HTTP requests, API clients, retry logic, so on and so forth. Of course, you need to be careful when pulling in libraries into your projects. You will need to think about things like privacy, maintainability, and package size, but that comes with experience. The main idea here is to start thinking about reusing instead of writing from scratch so you can focus your time on solving the problem and not reinventing the wheel. Fourth, being a means to an end coder. What I mean by this is you search for something because you're stuck and need some help. But the moment you find the post that gives you the solution, say in a place like stackoverflow.com, you copy paste it and move on without understanding how they solved it and why you could not. Uh, you solved your immediate problem, but you didn't really fix the root cause. And this leads you to become the kind of engineer that solves problem in a very hacky and patched up manner without understanding the actual inner workings of your own solutions. Uh, this is very dangerous and can lead to a lot of issues in your projects down the line and can lead to significant technical debt for whoever that is eventually going to end up addressing your patched up code. So don't be the stack overflow dev. It's okay to look for solutions online, but when you find one, make sure you fully understand how it works and to fill gaps in your own knowledge that led to you being um, stuck in the first place. Fifth, not writing tests. I think there is not enough emphasis placed on testing in colleges, but in your job, you will likely not even be able to check a single line of code without accompanying test cases. Beginner engineers tend to write test cases as an afterthought. They write their code first and then write test cases to test their logic. This is better than not writing test cases at all, but it still isn't the best approach. Build a habit of writing test cases for your code even before you have written your code. Because test cases don't just test your code, but they expose bad design as well. To be truly testable, any class should be self-contained, mockable, and it should have single responsibility. When your classes follow these rules, your tests can simply mock the expected behavior without needing to pull in the entire dependency chain. So when writing code, a great habit is to just create a skeleton or stubs of your code and then write the test cases for the expected behavior. At that point, obviously all your test cases will fail, but then you start filling in the logic, writing in the code, and slowly all your tests start to pass to a point where all of them are passing. This way you not only write fully tested code, but also build a maintainable and extensible code base with no hidden dependencies. Uh, if some of this sounds a bit complex to you, don't worry about it. The key takeaway from this is to follow a test driven development process and the rest you will learn as you go. Sixth is not reading enough code. This is so common that it's not even funny. I've seen great devs who can code up quick, effective solutions on their own, but completely crumble when they have to contribute to any project that is not their own. The reason they're just not used to reading other people's code. Reading other people's code, understanding it quickly, and being able to debug through it is a skill on its own. So start building that early because you will be doing that a lot in your job and reading others' code can be sometimes more challenging than writing your own code. The end goal as you progress through your career is to not only be able to read a code base that multiple devs have worked on, but understand the big picture quickly and identify areas where you can improve. And a great way to build this skill early on is to go to open source projects, read the code there, and try to understand what's going on. Even better if you can identify some improvements and put in a pull request to do so. Seventh and the final mistake is trying to learn too many things at once. I think there is a severe case of fear of missing out in young developers these days where they want to be up to date with the latest trend in software engineering all the time. I've said in multiple videos, Q&As and direct DMs already, but I'll say it again, quality over quantity. You may impress your recruiter with a list of fancy new tech on your resume, but if you're straight out of college and list a dozen different things, I will immediately be suspectful. So focus on a few things and learn them well. Don't worry too much about being up to date with the trend because you'll have enough time to do that in your job. Another thing this FOMO leads people to do is follow tutorial after tutorial on different technologies. And I'm sure you've all heard of the infamous tutorial hell where you follow a bunch of tutorials and get a false competence of being able to build something, but in reality, you've learned nothing. Don't waste your time on those things. I see a lot of engineering channels popping up with two, three hour videos on building a Twitter clone or Instagram clone and things like that. Look, 
if you could build Twitter in three hours, you'd probably be the smartest and fastest engineer in the world. Building a UX that looks like Twitter with a simple API and a backend store like Firebase is not a Twitter clone. You'll be hard pressed to hand draw just the data flow diagram involved in Twitter in three hours, let alone design a complete clone. So please do yourself a favor and get out of the habit of following these tutorials and instead invest your time on learning how things like Twitter actually function behind the scenes. Also, as a beginner, hopping from one tech to another too quickly never gives you enough time to learn something in depth. So spend some time really nailing your fundamentals in just one stack. It will not only make you a better engineer, but also build a platform for you, which will allow you to learn other languages and frameworks much faster. Well, these are the seven mistakes I see beginner engineers make very commonly. However, progressing through your career isn't just about pure coding horsepower. It's about curiosity and a growth mindset. And one way to keep your appetite for curiosity and growth alive is to continually learn not just things that are required for you to do your job effectively but also outside that. And one great place to do that is Skillshare, an online learning community for creative and curious people where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for lifelong learners on a variety of topics, including web development, design, freelancing, music, communication, to just name a few. There are classes for every skill level, whether you're a beginner or a pro. And one of the best things about classes on Skillshare is that they have no ads and they're all just under 60 minutes in length. So it's easy to fit them in your schedule, even if you are a very busy person. Speaking of career, I found the curated list of classes around career planning really informative. Even though they're not directly related to software engineering, I could personally relate to them a lot. Because as I mentioned before, career progression is much more about mindset than it is about just the raw ability. I especially enjoyed the Creative Leadership Toolkit by John Mieda and Five Mindsets to Power Your Career by Jacob Morgan, which talk about areas like perpetual learning, accountability, empathy, and self-awareness. So if you're interested in developing your curiosity and growth mindset, head over to Skillshare. And the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free trial of the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity and start your own learning journey. And that's that for this video. I hope it will help you keep an eye out for common mistakes that beginner software engineers tend to make and avoid them where possible. Please share your own stories and mistakes you have made as a beginner in the comments below so we can all learn from your experience as well. And while you're here, please check these videos out. I think you'll enjoy them as well. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.